People have been collecting things for many years. Rulers of ancient civilizations in Egypt, Babylonia, China, and India used to collect objects to place in their tombs when they died. Later in the 17th century, people began collecting pieces of artwork, which has continued to this day. Nowadays, people will collect almost anything. From Funko Pops to hotel do not disturb signs, people want to gather things that mean something to them or give them some sort of enjoyment. And if you're a 90s slash early 2000s kid, it is very likely that something that means something or once meant something to you are trading cards. A very popular phenomenon at the time, trading cards took over people's lives. One of these was the Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG, a trading card game released in North America in 2002. Players and collectors have been gathering their favorite cards and sets from this game for over 20 years, but it begs the question, which Yu-Gi-Oh! set is the absolute best to collect? Before we get started, I'm going to be giving away a booster box of Yu-Gi-Oh's 25th anniversary Pharaoh Servant. Make sure to like the video, be subscribed, and let me know down below what I got right and what I got wrong on this list. Today's video is sponsored by Factor. Factor saves time and alleviates stress. You might want to go out to eat, you might want to go to the grocery store, buy something, cook it. That takes a long time. With Factor meals, you simply throw them in the microwave, heat them up for two minutes, and you're good to go. And not only that, it's not unhealthy. They offer meals for keto, low calorie, and vegan and vegetarian lifestyles. And in that same vein, they can help you with your fitness goals. Because there are so many healthy options, you're able to pick what fits you best as you're looking to lose weight, gain muscle, whatever it is. And you can also receive different numbers of meals from four meals all the way up to 18 meals a week. I personally love Factor because I'm at home working most of the time so I don't have to go out, you know, go to fast food, which I used to do a lot more. Now Factor's really helping me to stay at home for lunch, eat a Factor meal, save money, save time. I'm really enjoying it. I tried the Southwest style chicken mac and man, was it tasty. Mmm. Talk with a mouthful, tasty. If this sounds interesting to you or you want to give it a try, click the link down below and use code POGRUXANOG50 to get 50% off plus free shipping. Thanks again to Factor for sponsoring this video. Number 10. Rarity Collection 25th Anniversary This might be a strange start to the list because Rarity Collection 25th Anniversary is a set that has yet to release, but the construction of this set will make it one of the coolest and most fun sets to collect in Yu-Gi-Oh! history. With each of the 79 cards in the set coming in all 7 rarities, this will be a massive 553 unique card set to collect. The main thing holding this set back from massive collectible potential is the card pool. Essentially every card revealed so far is a playable card for the current meta, with none being there for collector value. If this set were to contain iconic cards like Blue Eyes, Summon Skull, Chaos Emperor Dragon, and Jinzo, it would be one of the best sets to ever be printed in a collector's eyes. But with it being mostly meta cards like Ash Blossom, Nibiru, and Infinite Impermanence, it will still be an incredible set, but not as collectible as it could be. Number 9, The Duelist Genesis. The Duelist Genesis is our only Yu-Gi-Oh! 5D set in the top 10. This 111 card master set released in the TCG on September 2nd, 2008. It was the first release in the 5D series, and it is well known for containing the first of the Signer Dragons, Stardust Dragon, which comes in three different rarities in the set, Ultra Rare, Ultimate Rare, and the Legendary Ghost Rare. This set is carried in a large way due to the aforementioned Stardust Dragon, but also has a few other big cards that bolster its collectability. Being the first ever 5D set, it is the very first to contain Synchros. Cards like Goyo Guardian and Red Dragon Archfiend are iconic monsters in their own way. Goyo was instantly playable and it is still a great card in Edison format, while the Red Dragon Archfiend is an iconic Jack Atlas card in the anime. Other cards like Emergency Teleport, Charge of the Light Brigade, and even the rare Herald of the Orange Light really support this set as an awesome one. But this set is still one of the shakiest on the list due to relying heavily on the Stardust Dragon, but it is enough to sneak it onto the top 10 list. Number 8. Pharaoh Servant. Pharaoh Servant is the fourth core set released in the Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG, debuting on October 20th, 2002. This set contains one of the most iconic secret rares in Yu-Gi-Oh! history, Genzo. Well known for its appearance in the anime, it was also a very powerful card in the trading card game for several years, completely shutting down trap cards while it is on the field. But this isn't the only card that makes Pharaoh Servant awesome. The ultra rares in the set are cards like Buster Blader, Thousand Eyes Restrict, Call of the Haunted, and The Legendary Fisherman, which are all important cards in the Duelist Kingdom arc of the anime. It doesn't stop there, the rest of the set has more anime cards like Gear Free the Iron Knight, Thousand Eyes Idol, and the Parasite Parasite. Containing all of these cards from such a recognizable part of the show definitely makes makes this set one that collectors of nostalgia will flock to. The only slight negative regarding this set is that it's a bit easier to find than some of the other sets slash cards in the list and therefore will not quite have as much demand per card. This could also be seen as a positive if one wants to collect all the cards on a budget. Number 7, Battles of Chaos. Battles of Chaos is 
the newest set on the list, besides the set that hasn't come out, of course, released February 11th, 2022. But it is also one of the best collectible sets to release in a long time. I included it in my top 10 most collectible sets of 2022, and I have become even more bullish on it since. This set is new enough to contain Starlight Rares, the hardest Yu-Gi-Oh rarity to pull in terms of pull rate, and three of the five Starlights in this set are extremely collectible. The Dark Magicians, which depicts Dark Magician and Dark Magician Girl together, The Illusion of Chaos, a ritual version of the Dark Magician, and Blue Eyes Jet Dragon, which is a reference to the Blue Eyes Jet Plane Kaiba wrote in the anime. All of these already make an awesome set, but there is more. This set contains a 25th anniversary Dark Magician card that's artwork is based on its original manga appearance and has only been printed in the TCG once and that's this time. The coolest part about this card is it can be pulled outside of the rare slot in the pack, making it possible to pull Starlight Rare as well as this card in a single pack. The negative side of this set is how new it is. Konami is on a reprinting rampage, making new versions or nearly the exact same versions in other sets. If Konami were to reprint Starlight Rares in this set as 25th anniversary rares, or they reprinted the manga artwork Dark Magician in another set, it would certainly hurt this set's collectability. Side note, reprints hurt newer sets a lot more than older sets because there is still easy access to the originals and therefore they cannot grow in value with a cheaper alternative available. Older sets like the previously mentioned Pharaoh Servant can be reprinted over and over and because the first edition print is so difficult to obtain it still holds the original value. Number 6 Elemental Energy Elemental Energy is a core set from Yu-Gi-Oh! GX released on November 16th 2005. This set is actually one of the least playable sets of all time containing mostly terrible cards for the TCG. However when it comes to collecting this set has a lot of highlights. In this era of Yu-Gi-Oh! every card rare and above also could be pulled as an ultimate rare the highest rarity in the set. There are numerous high quality ultimate rares like fan favorite elemental heroes such as Tempest, Wild Edge, Blade Edge, and of course Shining Flare Wingman. The strong fan support of this archetype both in the anime and TCG makes these extremely popular cards. And speaking of popular archetypes, this set was the debut of the Dark World cards, another fan favorite archetype that involved discarding your own cards to get powerful effects. There are several of these cards in ultimate rare bringing even more collectible value to this set. And finally this set does have one playable card for the TCG the still used Pot of Avarice. While a very strong collectible set, there are still a couple of problems. Because it is an early GX set, these boxes are extremely rare, making it difficult to ever open packs. This also could be a good thing if you want your cards to be more scarce. And it is a very small set, containing only 85 cards in the master set and 60 unique cards. Number 5, Cybernetic Revolution. Cybernetic Revolution is a Yu-Gi-Oh! GX set released on August 6th, 2005, just after the GOAT format heyday. It is one of the most well-known sets in Yu-Gi-Oh! due to its association with the GX and anime, as well as being a game-changing set in the TCG. It was also in the Ultimate Rare era mentioned in the previous set, so the best cards in the set were the Ultimate Rarity. The main draw to this set are the fan favorite Cyber Dragons. The most playable of these was Cyber Dragon itself, which allowed you to special summon a massive body to the field for free if your opponent already controlled a monster. This card in Ultimate Rare is about $1,000 raw, but there are other Cyber Dragons as well. The Forgotten About Stepchildren, Proto Cyber Dragon, and Cyber Barrier Dragon are not as well known, but are both very cool cards. Then there are the fusion monsters Cyber Twin Dragon and Cyber End Dragon. Cyber End Dragon is one of the most expensive Yu-Gi-Oh cards that you can pull from a pack making it a huge chase for most collectors. The negatives for this set are very similar to the Elemental Energy negatives beforehand, with it being a rare box and a small set, 85 card master set and 60 unique cards, just like Elemental Energy. Number four, Invasion of Chaos. Invasion of Chaos is the 10th core set in the Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG released on March 1st, 2004. It was a game-breaking set that changed how the trading card game was played. This nostalgia for players of the time makes it a strong contender for one of Yu-Gi-Oh!'s most collectible sets of all time. The memories of blowing up the field with Chaos Emperor Dragon or summoning Black Cluster Soldier and attacking twice for game makes this one of Yu-Gi-Oh's most memorable sets. All of the Chaos Monsters in this set are very nice collection pieces, especially the previously mentioned CED, BLS, and of course the Dark Magician of Chaos, which was also a strong card in the game, but also has an anime Mandela effect. Many people remember this anime card in the original series, but it actually didn't appear until the GX anime. This set also includes strong spell cards like Dimension Fusion, which is still banned in 2023, and Smashing Ground, which is a strong removal spell and used in older formats. The negatives for this set are, there are a lot of foil cards that are not very interesting. 
Insect Princess, Dark Mirror Force, Guardian Angel Joan, Manticore of Darkness, Black Tyranno, and Levia Dragon Daedalus. These are not only foils, but ultras in the set. So opening the set, there are a small number of foils you really want to pull, with most being average or below average in collectability. Number three, Gladiator's Assault. Gladiator's Assault is a late GX set released on November 14th, 2007. This set debuted the Gladiator Beast archetype, a deck that is very polarizing. You either love playing it or hate playing against it, but these cards aren't really the reason this set is so collectible. This set didn't have the same makeup as early GX sets, the small 60 card sets with only ultimate rares as chase cards. This set was a 95 card set that contained not only ultimate rares, but 15 secret rares and a ghost rare as well. These added rarities make opening up glass much more exciting than the early GX sets. Also, the cards you can pull in this set are legendary. A few of these secret rares are some of the most desired cards in all of Yu-Gi-Oh! Magic Formula, Necroface, and Gilgarth. These cards are extremely hard to pull and seem to be either short printed or exclusive to booster boxes in some way. But Glass's Insanity doesn't end there. It also contains a Ghost Rare Elemental Hero Chaos Neos. Simply having a Ghost Rare Elemental Hero would be enough to boost any set's collectability, but this one is different. Konami made a mistake when printing Gladiator's Assault and the previous set Tactical Evolution, and somehow they mixed up the name of the previous Ghost Ghost Rare Rainbow Dragon and placed it onto the Elemental Hero Chaos Neos in Gladiator's Assault. This didn't happen on every Ghost Rare, but it is possible to pull both the regular Gladiator's Assault version and the Error Misprint version. So this makes opening packs of this extremely interesting because you can pull two separate ghosts, one being a massive error. At this point, there are not many negatives for this set. It is a really awesome set to collect and there aren't any glaring issues. Number two, The Legend of Blue Eyes White Dragon. The Legend of Blue Eyes White Dragon is the very first set to release in the Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG, debuting March 8th, 2002. Being Yu-Gi-Oh!'s first ever set makes this set a shoe in for the list, but that isn't the only reason that people want to collect LOB. It also contains some of Yu-Gi-Oh!'s most memorable and awesome cards like Dark Magician, Red Eyes B Dragon, Monster Reborn, Gaia the Fierce Knight, as well as the Dragon Champion, one of the most well-known monsters ever, Exodia the Forbidden One, and of course, the powerful engine of destruction itself, the Blue Eyes White Dragon. Containing so many huge anime cards in the foil slots makes for a really exciting opening and since this set gets reprinted every few years, it is pretty accessible to the public for pack opening. All of these reprints make collecting LOB an insane task if you want it to be. With nine different English printings, go check out my opening video of the other versions if you haven't seen that. You can spend years collecting each version specifically, or you can jumble them together for a quicker collecting experience. This is one of the best sets ever. The only slight negative is that there are not as many iconic anime cards in the common and rare slots as one might think there would be in the first set, but even then, this set is the very top tier for Yu-Gi-Oh collectors. Finally, our number one most collectible set is here, Metal Raiders. Metal Raiders was the second core set to release in the Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG, debuting June 26, 2002. This might be somewhat controversial due to edging out Legend of Blue Eyes, but I think this set has even more to offer. LOB's strong points being its classic anime cards and potential collectability due to there being so many prints are shared by Metal Raiders, another set with nine prints as well. However, Metal Raiders has arguably more well-known anime cards in the set than LOB does, containing both Gate Guardian and Thousand Dragon its secret, Beast Skull Dragon, Summon Skull, Time Wizard, Mirror Force, Solemn Judgment, Change of Heart, and Barrel Dragon at Ultra Rare, Heavy Storm, Song of the Thunder, Suijin, Kazijin, Harpy Lady Sisters, Catapult Turtle, Garnisi Elephantus, and Karibo at Super Rare, Magician of Faith, Witch of the Black Forest, Sangan, Shadow Ghoul, and Great Moth at Rare, and Petite Moth, Harpy Lady, Baby Dragon, Castle of Dark Illusions, Cocoon of Evolution, Crass Clown, Feral Lamp, Gazelle the King of Mythical Beast, Illusionist Faceless Mage, Labyrinth Tank, and many more that I won't mention due to time at common. That's a lot of collectible cards in one set. This set contains by far the most number of well-known anime cards, making it a very nostalgic set to collect. It is also a much more playable set than LOB was, introducing a lot of cards that would be used for years to come. There are essentially no negatives to this set, but when making an argument against LOB, this being the second set does not quite hold as much weight as being the first TCG set ever. That is my top 10 list. Make sure to let me know in the comments what you agreed with and of course what you disagreed with. What sets got snubbed and left off the list and which of these sets didn't deserve to be here. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to subscribe for more daily content.